Well, okay, my outstanding friends. It just keeps getting better and better every day. This is just uh, a day or two ago. Shedding new light on dark matter. This is New York University, and they're talking about models of what they can see in the universe that might predict dark matter. Well, we have actually found dark matter, and is that right there? It's what's called a muon, and it is glued to the electron neutrino, muon neutrinos and electron neutrinos. They form photons, and when you can break away that black particle from the white, you have raw dark matter. We have done that. You see this? They say the only way you can predict it, you can see it, is by its gravitational pull on ordinary matter, which is the stuff that glows that we see as ordinary matter. Let me show you that actually happening. Okay, dark matter is very, very simple. There it is right there. It's dark matter. It's gravity. It's the source of attraction of all matter, and it forms black holes. Now, what is this? This is the attached part. This is the glowy part. We can see that it radiates energy back. Together, they form photons. That's a photon of light from a red pulsed laser. Here it is in its energetic values. Now, what we can see is a white glowy part that's bigger and smaller, which means it's squishy. However, the big black part is the dark matter, never changes size. And that is exactly what Fermilab says. This is from Fermilab. This is not my doodle here. Fermilab says, and I'll show you the article from Don Lincoln, says that there's a fixed particle that never changes size, has a ton of mass, and a little glowy part around it, and then a white swishy one that may have no mass at all. And that's precisely what we have found in our experiments. And not only that, we accelerated that particle and forced it to divide here and then reassemble here, which is fission and fusion. This is the light particle exceeding the speed of light, literally creating a photonic boom. All right, this is a photonic boom. Not a sonic boom, it's a photonic boom. What does that mean? When you hear a, a sonic boom, it can literally crush buildings, shake foundations. It's creating a hell of a lot of energy, and so is that. And how can we use that energy? Because it's not in the, in the sound range, it's in the energetic electron range. We can harvest that energy in a device similar to this with a solar type collector right after the Venturi, right here. Now, what are we going to get? We should get literally a ton of energy because this is what we came in with was the two particles attached together, the muon neutrino, the black, and the electron neutrino. This is dark matter. Dark matter, dark energy, it's attractive only, it's gravity, it creates the black holes in space. And I can show you that too. The Russians created one in a vacuum tube in zero gravity using ionized particles, plasma. Now this is the division, that's fission. No other way you can cut it. The black got away from the white, only the white comes through, and that's exactly what CERN says. These are the smallest particles they can find, and they can actually turn into a sterile muon and electron showers, precisely what I showed. Dark matter solved. Okay, this should make it extremely easy. Particles are not photons and neutrons, gigantic big particles. A photon, uh, I mean protons and neutrons. These are huge. What everything is made of is little tiny electrons. And the electron has the black and the white. Okay, I'm going to wait for somebody to finally to talk to me. I just contacted New York University who made these statements about the dark matter. I've contacted every one of them, never had a response. Let's see what happens. Photons and neutrons are not big balls like this, a photon, uh, a proton, excuse me, and a neutron, gigantic particles, because they smash them together. They can see exactly the particles I showed you, which are these particles right here and these particles right here. This is what a proton looks like. We are working with this right here. 
We're working with that particle right there. That's what we're seeing is light coming through here. And that light accelerates at a venturi. It creates the Higgs fields. It creates the black and white particles. And we can actually see gravity and dark matter because that's all the black is. And it will collect itself on top of itself. It likes to be next to each other and it pulls all the white in. And what you will eventually have is this right here. This, my friends, is the new model of dipole electron flood theory. This is all the, this is the whole model. <laughs> That's the whole model. You don't have all this nonsense that they come up with. It's just the dark matter gets surrounded by the white matter. The white matter and does not want to touch each other, so they will always go to the outside edges and push the dark matter to the center. When they're in the light form, however, and in the particle form, in the electron form, there, this is an electron, and bzzz, that wants to burn into you, it's static, it's lightning, it's electricity, and it's just got one dark carrier, which is the boson, which is the big heavy particle, Don Lincoln calls it the um, fixed particle, and then you have that point particle attached to it, which has a big field. Anytime that goes through the air and concusses, it pushes and shoves any other white ones. Two of them together make a bouncer. This is a burner, that's a bouncer. A bouncer means light will hit you and bounce off. Depends on how hard it's hitting, what type of element it's hitting, because that determines the spring. The springs are the electrons in their orbits. The further they are from the center, the less of a spring they have. They bloop like a pillow. If they're right up close and they're really hard and tight there, they go, boing, it bounces right out. That's why you're, well, anyway, I don't want to get too deep into this, but I made one change to my theory. I had 1839 electrons before. I believe it's 1835 electrons make what they would consider a proton. But it's actually this, and there's 1839 of these make that. Now, then you have a neutron which says, I don't have a charge. Well, why don't you have a charge? Because there's 1836, you're neutral. That means you don't have one extra or one less. So you don't want to give one up, you don't want to take one on. That's the whole new story, which means this has to have a whole new story because one hydrogen is not one of these and one tiny little particle out here. It's this and one more of these out here that wants to get in, but this says no. We have enough white stuff around here to say, we don't want you here. You can stay out, right out here. You stay right there, you're okay. But you can try to come closer, out you go. It's a new day. Physics starts today. All right, so now we know that the particles can separate and create exactly what the Fermi lab and CERN. This is their little picture, it says a muon neutrino, electron neutrino attached together, smashes into a new medium, creates electron showers, and the muon goes on its way as a sterile muon. There it is right there. They reattach almost instantaneously, almost like instantaneously. In here is raw energy. I say in that raw energy is literally it could be hundreds of times more than we started with the input because it literally was a photonic boom. This is a literally a subatomic explosion and we can harvest that energy somehow, one way or another. We can either somehow use the black or use the white. This needs a little bit of research but within 60-90 days tops we should be able to have something that creates free energy game changer. Let's get it done. I need some help. I need some assistance. I need somebody to respond. Now, I, I like I say, I, I tried to contact everybody at New York University that's making these statements. I hope they'll contact back. And I'm in Connecticut, so I'm not far away. I can work with these people very easily. And I have the professional model of Zoom, so we can all interact and, and solve these issues that we have right now. This dark matter is is so much up in the air for physicists because they can't get away from the standard model. You have to go to the electron flood model, which is dipoles. Everything is made of dipoles. I had this theory in 1970, 
and I could never prove it until Rod Warren did these experiments and proved what I said.